clearly was clearly showing inferior skills and in the second also our opponent got knocked out in the first and in the second so practically the fight was in our hands but we end up losing anyway the fight in both the scenarios because for the lack of mental skills increasing the already big amount of practice won't help the boxer to overcome the pressure of fighting when the real fight is on the line so already we know that physically we are training here almost almost close to to to, to, to the top okay so adding more is not going to help we need to go and work on the mental skills psychological skills the boxer needs to develop skills to relax physically and mentally under pressure and we know our our sport is a contact sport so it's very important to be mentally relaxed other athletes need to improve or enhance concentration confidence motivation or mental preparation now let's this is the pst psychological skills training and this is what we are going to do when we take care of the psychological improvement of our boxers a systematic and consistent practice of mental or psychological skills for the purpose of enhancing which improving performance increasing enjoyment or achieving greater sport and physical activity satisfaction like physical and technical skills psychological skills can also be taught learned and practiced as well as how to enhance performance in your boxers by teaching mental skills exactly the same the importance of pst psychological skills training all athletes fall victim to mental letdowns and mistakes the additional problem here is that we do boxing so it's not only a, a mental letdown can cause serious injuries in other sports you know where there is no physical contact i mean in, in football there is in, in, in soccer there is some physical contact in basketball also but it's not the, the main uh, goal to punch in the faces so this is very important to highlight okay the difference also on the sport so in our sport when we fall victim to mental letdowns there we also risk our the safety of our boxer most athletes know what it feels to be in the zone when are they are everything falls there in the perfect momentum and everything goes smooth and easy where everything seems to come together effortlessly you see without any effort everything is going so nice and performance is exceptional so we need to take our athletes there and to be there is not enough physical skills we need mental skills most of the time if the mental skills are, are higher than the physical one we can absolutely go places mental and emotional components often overshadow and transcend the purely physical and technical aspect of performance in any fights boxer success or failure results from a combination of physical strength speed power and mental which is concentration confidence and side management and abilities physical abilities most coaches consider that sport is at least 50 percent mental but unfortunately the majority do not practice any mental skills with their athletes i personally think also i wrote this but this is just a, a, a basic uh, saying but i give also 80 percent is in the brain and all the rest will follow because the most important part is here we can be ready physically to do really anything but if our mind says no it's no there is nothing we can do 
the PST program, the PST program is the training for the boxer to learn psychological skills, same as relaxation skills, that help these fighters regulate their psychological state, their feelings or confidence. Anxiety. Now we will go back to anxiety in an, in an instant, but first we go and see the psychological phases during a training camp. <clears throat> Every boxer faces different phases during the development of a training camp. The coach must be aware before starting the camp that the boxer will inevitably go through those phases. Some of the boxers won't show any traces of the agony which they are experiencing and some will show it at all. The coach must possess high skills in understanding and have a close and trusted relationship with the boxer in order to give him the best support during this particular time, which is a real transformation. Every time a boxer starts a training camp, he or she will go through a complete change in different areas, not only related to technical and physical abilities, but also psychological, behavioral, and character. The pathway through the phases starts from the very first day of the new training camp, which marks also the starting level of the boxer in all the areas and will be used to measure the improvements at the end. Why all these phases? Because same as any transformation we go through in life, like growing up as an example, struggles will happen. Improving means pushing yourself through difficult things in difficult times. The boxer will be challenged at any single stage and also any single moment of the phase for each phases. It's very important to remember that the understanding of those phases and acknowledgement of their existence will give to the coach the possibility to avoid psychological breakdowns, injuries, and also tragical and fatal mistakes during the fight. Smart coaches promote the uniqueness of every single boxer. Boxers are all different and as well um, are all different and as well their abilities, traits, and the way to deal with their emotions. They all have personal rituals to deal with the feelings connected to the training and the fights. The coach must understand the importance of such rituals and should also learn how to identify them to let feel the boxer safe, understood, and protected to express him herself in the way that matches his, her needs. Anyone feel different emotions and have different needs. All is necessary to enter the ring at the highest psychological level as possible. If the coach had his, her own competition experiences as an athlete, should remember how small details were important and use those memories as the knowledge to support the boxer. The importance of the rituals. Do you know, of course, if you had your personal uh, experience, the, all the rituals that you were uh, in the need to follow before and during, before mostly the competition to enter in that zone and then compete at the best level. Example of rituals. Listening to the music till entering the ring very common, wearing the left glove before the right one or vice versa. In some country, this is a really a real routine, which is a bit of scaramantic. I had, a, I had a Georgian coach, which always he wanted to me, uh, he wanted me to wear first, I think the right one and then the left saying that this was 
uh, a routine in, in, in his experience, so I had to follow. It's okay, no problem. Not talking to anyone for an entire day. Talking to everyone like there is no competition. As you see, these are two different aspects. There is some of us, some of the boxers, that they are that they need not to talk to anyone for an entire day. They don't want to feel any word coming to their ears. And the other, on the other side, we have people that they really need to express talk, 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 talk. In both the ways, they're trying to find their focus and their way to enter the zone. Screaming loud before leaving the changing room to the fight. I think you, you, you saw many times and probably you did yourself when you go, wow, come on, just to, to give yourself that push to jump, to take that step and start walking through the, through, the, through the ring, to the ring. Keeping something special as the most important thing to have at any time could be anything, really anything from a soft, a small soft toy, a picture, you ever notice that some of, of, of athletes, this is, of course, in, in, in any sports, they have all, always something with them, which is something that they need. They, it, made them, it made them feel safe, or it's a way to switch on the machine in competition mode. Whatever it is, whatever it means for them, if it works, is good. Drinking or eating the same specific food and drinks. <coughs> Personally, <coughs> during the um, uh, during the day of the fight, I was always always having a specific like like 200 grams of white pasta with a bit of oil and parmesan, and that has to be before before the fight. So I, it was my 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 personal routine, and some of the other colleagues that I had. Some were eating nothing. Some had to drink specific things. Otherwise, uh, your, your brain start engaging in negative thoughts. So this is the why. We do this because for some reason, we feel safe and we feel okay following our routine. Can, can look, can, um, for some of us, can really uh, means nothing. But for some of us can mean anything. Making a call five minutes before entering the ring. This is another example of ritual. Now, the key of the rituals, let's go here. All those examples of rituals and more, of course, can look crazy to someone who never had a boxing fight, competition, tournament, or championship. But for a boxer are vital, as I mentioned before, because they help us to reach the zone. And if, and if we don't have it, sometimes we feel lost. Of course, we can improve also this, but a ritual is good. It is it until, until it is, how can I say, healthy, is okay. When they turn to be unhealthy, there is where you as a coach need to step in and try to take action to help your boxer to go through this particular and difficult phase. He or she needs it to crack the stress, the pressure, the responsibilities, the fear, etc. A coach must always remember that a boxer is a warrior walking through the way to enter the arena where we'll fight not only the opponent, but also all the feelings listed. In conclusion, if anything is helpful to drive the focus of the boxer to the fight instead of the fears, doubts, and more, the coach must support it. You see, as I was anticipating, if it's healthy and it works, we support it. If turns, there we need to be very careful on, that's why it's important to know our athletes. 
if we notice that the routine is turning into an unhealthy habit, there we need to step absolutely in and try to take all the action to make our boxer go backwards to calmness and to fix this unhealthy way of handling a, a routine to a healthy way. This is very important. Now we will see what the body messages are, and then we also will see a classic workout to make sure to improve the knowledge of our boxer so that we will be capable to recognize if any issues is happening, especially during the fight, which is the most important moment where knowing our boxer is very important to avoid any injuries or, you know, problems. Paying attention to the body messages that the boxer is showing unaware of it, it's helpful to understand if the boxer is going through a difficult phase, either during the training camp or the fight. The coach must learn how to read the body messages showed, sent by his or her boxer. To learn the language that each boxer's body is talking, the coach must study the boxer during the training camp. Every detail found notice should be written down into a file for each boxer. Boxers are totally unaware of it but the body always send messages to those that can receive it and understand it, understand it. Here, this is us. These, those people, you know, are the coaches, it's us. So we need to be capable to receive these messages and to understand it. So that thanks to this, we can really take action to improve a momentum that could be crucial. Now, let's see, this is very important because here I'm giving you a sort of um, training routine for you to learn how your boxers behave, spatial, especially during the training. So then you will repeat this also into the fight and you compare all the videos that you will have to do analysis, deep analysis to learn always more and more about your boxer. So a good training for the coach is also recording a video of the training. First, during the session, notes, will be taken till the end of the session to not, for, to not forget all the quick impressions and details noticed. So while we are recording, we will also live view, review the session and take notes of what we are noticing right now with our eyes, okay? While the session is live. And at the same time, the camera is recording what we are viewing live. Then a basic idea is made by the coach and will be the time for action number two. The coach will start watching the video based on his notes taken during the live training to analyze them and to check if they match. So we took our notes and we have our video recording. We start the video and we start watching the video following our notes this is this first step. So we see if what we notice at the very first live impression is matching to what we are now analyzing and seeing for the second time, but on video, see if they match or maybe something was wrong or you missed already something and you are noticing on this first review. The first review of the video will end checking how many notes were right from the live view. Now it's time for the second review. 
the second review will be without the previous notes. So the notes that we took during the live uh, training, we will put it in the side and we start watching the video again. So without any influences and we take new notes. So the coach can double check without the own the influence of the notes and write down again the new details found during the second review. So now we have a second review. Once all the reviews are done and all the notes are written, will be the final analysis. How we will do the final analysis? The coach will be compared all of them and writing down the final conclusion. So then we will do, we will compare all the analysis written down, all the notes, and see what we see, um, what, what is matching, what is not, what we need to add, or what we did is wrong. With this work, the coach will always have ready to check important information about the boxer and will easily improve either the relationship the boxer will feel understood and the performances, avoiding all the mistakes found in the analysis. So see, it's very important because so like this really, when one of our boxer will uh, do a certain movement or the shoulders can be uh, moving the eyes on top or, or shaking the head constantly, we will be really capable to recognize if he is good or something is wrong. So we really need to step in and take action. Now the coach will start learning the body language of the boxer, because thanks to this, we will start really understanding any kind of movement. Now let's move to the personal environment of the boxer. The coach, must consider even another very important matter, which is the boxer's personal environment. The personal environment includes family, friends, girlfriend, wife, boyfriend, husband, relatives, all the environment which is really surrounding our boxer is truly important. Sometimes there is something happening in the boxer's life who is not sharing, but somehow will show through tiny details when he or she at the gym and training under the eye of the coach. You, I'm sure that you all went through this kind of situation where you see our boxers and they try not to show anything, but then when we see them in action, something is not working. They are, not, they are not smooth, they are not relaxed, they are tense, they are angry. Maybe we, we see a, 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 a more anger in the punches and they are not focused. And if we try to ask something, they will say, no, no, it's okay, coach, it's okay, coach. So that's why it's deeply important to understand the body messages so we can recognize when they are really okay or when they are not. When if they are not, we can step, step slowly, slowly to try to dig into it, to make them open and speak to us so we can add them in the right way. This is another important reason, of course, as I said, to learn how to read the body messages. This is a specific situation which helps to understand why to have an open relationship with the boxer to support him, her, by all means, and in any ways as possible in any areas of their life is the answer. Again, to support by all means in any ways as possible in any areas of their life is the answer. The boxer is going to fight. A good coach, must be aware of any issues that is bothering and taking off the focus from the training and the fight to avoid defeat, injuries, and of course, all the sadness and related emotions of the loss. Acknowledgement of different kinds of fears. 
So, of course, I think I mentioned uh, a couple of times during the, during the previous days, we have different kinds of fears. Boxers experience different kinds of fears, and it's very important that the coach acknowledges the existence of all of them. Otherwise, won't take the right action to help and support the boxer, but will just lead him in the wrong way. Some kind of fears can be very common, fear not to perform well, fear to get injured, fear to lose, fear to not overcome their own shadows, fear to get hurt. All these, I'm sure you know them very well, they are very common and they can really happen to any of us. But what's more, the most difficult to recognize, understand and admit is the fear to succeed. This is really important to understand, the fear to succeed. The fear to succeed is the worst and the coach must be very deep must, must go very deep to recognize it. Because the fear to succeed will penetrate the boxer as at the deepest level of his persona or her persona. This particular fear will always try to stop the boxer every time an opportunity to improve to the next level will show up. As far as it seems very strange, the fear to succeed, it's real. And why does this happen? Because when we are working so hard for a goal, a dream, the dream is there. We can see, we can see, but still far. And so we have all this motivation. We, we overcome anything. This, it, this is a... a a pathway which has a start at the end. The start is when we decided to start this mission and the end, of course, is related to the reaching the goal. So it's really, we, we, we can also measure it, okay? Let's call it like this. We can measure this pathway as from here till there until we are looking at the dream from also the center, it's okay, it's not that scary, it's motivating us, okay? Also, it's there, but still a dream that we want to achieve, but we also don't know if we will achieve, so until it's a dream, gives us fire. So it's pushing, it's pushing us to go every day to the, to the, to the, to the training and give 110% of us, but still there. But what if one day we will really reach that opportunity to make our dream come true? What will happen? Well, if we are, if we are well prepared mentally, like blades, we will overcome and reach the goal. But if there is still a lack in us, the fear to succeed will take over. Why? Because until I'm looking at the point where, which I want to reach, I know where I'm going. I know what I have to do. I know what will happen. I can lose, I can, I can get injured. I know everything, I can see. I can see the projection of all of it. But I never, reach my dream and I have no idea what will, what will be around that corner. We don't know. So that's why the fear to succeed will take over because it's scary not knowing what will be after. So you will see that some of us, I, I've been there, I, 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 I experienced this kind of fear and I can tell you that this was a sort of a cage where it was better to lose 
feeling comfortable and then can can pity myself but say okay next time i will do because so i can still dream in that dream that in that moment i could have the opportunity to reach but the fear to succeed stop me so as i said yes i i experienced this and then i i, I made myself stronger mentally to be absolutely effective in the moment where it was needed at the moment where i can reach the goal so and let's read now why is this happening the answer is simple as i already explained when the boxer is working really hard to achieve his goals the directions and the obstacles are clear in front of them the effort invested to reach the accomplishment is huge. The desire and the dream will turn into the will which push the boxer exponentially. Thanks to the hard work, the day will come. The boxer will be in great shape and about to achieve the goal. This is the moment when the fear to succeed will appear. Winning will turn scary because till that moment, everything was planned but what about after the corner that I already mentioned? This dramatic question will turn into a stronger opponent who will make the boxer, without understanding it, give up and choose to deal with a loss instead of a big win, which opens a big new chapter of life. The key word is responsibilities. A champion is not anymore a contender if he wins, if he reaches his goal or her goal, and will be expectations for the champion, duties, etc. That's why the coach must care of the boxer at any level to lead him, her to the success and to help dealing with after the goal would be achieved. Okay. Let's have a minute of, of, of rest and then we continue with the weight cup, weight cup uh, psychology. In the meantime, I give you some rest and I would like to know if you have any questions and now. Let's uh, anxiety. What is anxiety? Different types of anxiety. How to deal with anxiety? How the boxer feels before a fight? Excited, fear of not doing well, agitated, nervous, motivated. Anxiety is the negative aspect of experiencing stress and can be caused by the fear of failing in a competitive event. Now we will address two kinds of anxiety. Trait anxiety is an individual's common behavior to respond anxiously to demands. State anxiety is where once anxiety changes depending on the kind of situation they put in. Spielberg in 1972 identified trait anxiety by how anxious one feels in general and state anxiety by how anxious one feels at a particular time in a particular situation. Meaning, let's say, um we have a uh, bad relationship with some people okay and we had some difficulties some fights arguments blah 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 and so every time you feel you hear the name of this person state anxiety you start feeling you know anxious because this already takes you back to that precise moment and you are living again that kind of uh discomfort um, you start being nervous all, all this kind of stuff 
how to measure anxiety by analyzing an athlete's responses to a series of statements about how she it is in a competitive situation it is possible to determine the level of anxiety a test that provides such functionality is the sport competition anxiety test. Martens at 1999. The SCAT, SCAT. Competition anxiety is the specific kind of anxiety that shows in competition time. Ta da! <laughs> the importance of the contest, current situation, Previous performance and personality of the athlete can have a major responsibility. How the boxer feels in a competition. Symptoms of anxiety during a competition. Anxiety symptoms, stress of participation in sports, and this we already mentioned uh, before while during, during the pose during the break. Anxiety is fear by the individual of some dangerous occurrence in the future. Can be, now we see, like getting, getting hurt or, or lose. Anxiety is usually accompanied by unpleasant feelings, stress or tension, somatic symptoms. Different types of anxiety. Somatic anxiety, the body, expression of anxiety, sweat, tremor, increasing heart rate. Cognitive anxiety, expression of anxiety, negative thoughts about performance, worry, inability to concentrate, and inattention. The more experience, an individual had the lower the level of cognitive anxiety. Cognitive anxiety was best predicted by an evaluation of previous performances, individuals' perception of preparedness and goal setting. All this already we discussed it during the break and the previous um, presentation. Males and females. Females had lower self-confidence and higher somatic anxiety scores than males. Face cognitive anxiety and self-confidence is determined by readiness to perform and the importance they personally place on doing well. John Swain and Kelly 991. Among males, cognitive and somatic anxiety was more strongly affected by their perception of opponents' ability and probability of winning. We just discussed this too. Clearly, anxiety exerts a variety of effects of athletic performance. These effects, uh, these effects vary based on sport, gender, and level of experience. Cognitive anxiety, somatic anxiety, self-confidence. Example of exercise to deal with anxiety. This is very important if you want to take note. Rest your dominant forearm and hand palm down on a desk or tabletop. Tense all the muscles in the hand and fingers, and then try to alternately tap the index and middle fingers back and forth as quickly as possible. Relax all the muscles in the forearm and hand and repeat the exercise. So take some notes if you want, or take a picture and then you can try this later on. Adrenaline. When a boxer is frightened, nervous, the adrenaline glands squirt adrenaline into your blood. Makes your heart beat faster. More oxygen and glucose into muscles. Blood vessels in gut and skin contract, shunting down to the muscles, making your stomach 
feel empty. The well, really well known butterflies, butterflies feeling. When you have this feeling that you, you, you can't really explain, and that's why we call it butterflies feeling. Competition and training differences. Pressure. Supporters watching. The presence of the crowd can increase anxiety, especially of inexperienced boxers. Absolutely common and normal. This can be beaten, as we mentioned before, through making experience happen. How to deal with anxiety? It's normal to feel anxious before and during the fight. Relaxation exercises, mental imagery and mental rehearsal, planning your actions in advance. Link to visualization, seeing yourself winning the fight. This is really working. Thinking positively, we can do well. Psychological skills. Psychological skills are defined as focusing attention and concentration, staying cool under pressure and recovering quickly from making a bad move. So if we are well-trained psychologically, if any of this situation will happen, it's not that we can avoid situation to happen if we are highly skilled in psychological, okay? If we have high psychological skills, but we can react in the right way when some of this situation will present to us. Instead of feeling lost completely, that we don't know even where we are and we don't know what to do, we don't know how to react, we don't know how to protect ourselves, so this will cause bad hand for sure for our fight in that moment. Boxers who are not capable to control their emotional arousal before a fight will feel unprepared emotionally, which can lead to feelings of anxiety. Inverted view hypothesis. Yes, we need some kind of enthusiasm to have our best performance. Nervous is a causing to excitement. It's not that elite athletes don't feel pre-fight nerves. It's that they know how to manage them. Here you can see a graphic of the inverted view hypothesis. See how the performance physical and mental, how where is the best, the optimum performance, where it's high, when we are laid back, when we are anxious, where is the stress zone and panic, anger, or violence when we are low? You see, the medium is where we see laid back or anxious. When we are up on the, on on high, physically and mentally, is there where we reach, as I call here, optimum. And so this is our arousal level graphic. We need the appropriate level of activation for the action we are, we are to perform. This is known as optimal arousal. Individual differences. The optimal level is also dependent on factors that are unique to the individual. Not all athletes benefit from a pep talk before performing. The ability to cope with high levels of stress. Relaxation exercises. Progressive muscle relaxation involves tensing specific muscle groups, then relaxing them sequentially. Deep breathing and counting. More strategies to be used with the boxer. Learn to think clearly and set realistic goals. Work through one problem at a time in a logical way. If he or she feels a panic attack coming soon, coming on, sorry, 
has to think through the problem by breaking it down. As I said a couple of days before, again, when we have fears, or in this case, we are saying a panic attack coming on, think through the problem by breaking it down. If we admit, we acknowledge what we have, we take it from inside, we place it on the table, there are one, two, and three issues. Now I can see them, so I can break it down, so I can acknowledge I have this, this, and this. So what I have to do to overcome. So then I know that I will be able to find the strategy soon as possible to beat these issues because now I can see, I can see because I know I acknowledge the issue. And once I acknowledge it turns something that I can fight because it's in front of my eyes. And for us as, as fighters as in the psychological way of being a fighter, if we are scared more of what we cannot see because we know we cannot fight and find the strategy to win. But if we have an, an opponent in front of us, then it's just a matter of time and work to overcome this finding the right strategy. Develop a routine. It's effective because they create a sense of comfort and control, absolutely. What does matter is that you, the coach, have to design a series of steps that makes the boxer feeling good and that he or she practices enough so that he or she becomes comfortable with it. Practice under pressure. Practical examples to teach to the boxer. Simple examples. Prepare things early so you'll be on time. Why? Because most of the boxers that, I, that I've met, they do everything at the last moment, which causes an anxiety. Because then they, they, will, they, will, they will jump into the fear to forget something. Then they will start the palpitation, bam, 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 start pumping, pumping, heart rate going higher because they feel that they're, they're doing something wrong. They're feeling also that they should be already on the way for, to, to the competition. And they, they, they start feeling really that they will lose something. Then they start that, and all this will cause more issues. And they start thinking bad, you know, about themselves. So prepare things early so you'll be on time. No need to rush. Prepare your kit. To teach to the boxer, change your body to change your mind. Take a moment to slouch over with your hands folded in your lap and know how you feel. Next, sit or stand up straight, roll your shoulders back and lift your chest. Notice the difference. If you are like most people, odds are that you feel far more confident and powerful in the second position if I stay like this or if I stay like this, right? Body language has a huge impact on how you feel about yourself. See, we go back to the body language exercise that I gave you before. Prior to big events, it is recommended to open yourself up and make yourself big. In other words, if you hold your body like you are confident and in charge, your mind is likely to follow. Okay, now let's go back to the weight cut management. So we, do we have any questions here before we step into the, into the next? Guys, do we? I think we covered also the discussion that we had during the during the break. I give you more more information. We move forward. Yes. Okay. Good.
great. The weight cut psychology. One of the most dramatic phases during a training camp is the weight cut. Several psychological phases, including emotions, tough thoughts, etc., are affecting the boxer while performing the weight cut. Anything can happen, and the boxer can show anger, emotional, aggressiveness, blue, down, craziness, all of them. Also can happen, physical major issues, ending up unconscious right on the scale, causing several issues to the body because of deep starving while training hard to make the weight, etc. The coach must be aware that this kind of emotions and physical issues because of the weight cut can happen. That's the reason why the coach must support and help the boxer in any how and ways as possible to go through it. Any aspects of the boxer's health must be taken care of from the coach. We are in charge and we are responsible. Why is so important for the coach to know every step taken by the boxer during the weight cut process? Because, and here I'm sure that you already experienced several times, most of the time, the boxer is struggling with the weight and to make it could possibly do dangerous things affecting their own health and sometimes leading to tragedies. The coach must be more than sure that the boxer is following his, her guidelines and instructions by all means. That's why the coach must know what's right to keep the boxer in weight together with psychological and physical health to step into the ring fully healthy. To understand if the boxer is not hiding dangerous actions, the coach will use the skill of reading the body messages. You see how, how, how everything now is connected and we need all these skills. Tips for the coaches. Pay attention to the smallest details. Grow a deep close relationship with the boxer to create a safe zone where the boxer can feel free to express his, her feelings because inside the safe zone, there is no judgment. Don't overestimate the boxer. If he or she is a champion, doesn't mean that there is no issues to discuss. Very important to remember. Be always ready and focused to rescue him or her, even if by appearances all look good, and he or she is not asking for help. Okay, I think now I would like to have um, some questions if you want, and then I will give you a break because I know that all this is pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty tough to, to digest all in once, a lot of information. So, um, Erwin, I think we can we can stop recording and we open a discussion. Yeah, and, and it, I want to say that it needs a lot of mental health to listen <laughs> for the lectures as well. So it's, uh, it's yes, a I big mental stress. So release the stress by asking the questions. And uh, this is very useful because now you got tools for uh, for the workouts or how to act with your, with your athletes. It's basic, basic knowledge, what, what you need to know, what you probably know, but you don't, didn't maybe recognize. And for some time to time, it's good to just remind of this issues as well. So 
every question is welcome. Please ask the questions. We try to answer with our best. Absolutely. And I will uh, stop recording.